Hi, welcome back to the second video of the series where we are building an expense tracker web app using Firebase, React, and Next. If you did not watch the first one, don't worry. You can jump right into this one without needing to go back to the first one. As a recap, we built functionality for a user to create an account and log in, as well as add, view, edit, and delete expenses. We did so using Firebase Authentication, Storage, and Firestore. And after building out all of that, we deployed our great web app to Firebase Hosting so we can share it with our friends to use. If you'd like to go through that video, the link is in the description. Just as a side note, we will be using a bit of Firestore in this video as well. So if you need a refresher, feel free to check out the first video of the series or our Getting Started with Firestore video linked in the description. So what are we going to do today? Well, sometimes when we accumulate a lot of receipts for whatever reason, maybe we just went on a long vacation or a work trip, had to buy a lot of items to decorate a new home, or we just felt particularly spendy, it'd be really slow and inconvenient to have to manually add each receipt to our expense tracking app. What if we could upload images to our web app and it would automatically extract the relevant information for us to confirm? That's probably a lot more efficient and I won't hate having to go through this huge pile of receipts. With the help of Google Cloud's Vision API and Firebase Cloud Functions, we're going to implement Optical Character Recognition, or OCR, so our users can do exactly that upload images, and get back the relevant information without needing to type in every single field themselves. All they'll need to do is upload the receipts and then confirm the contents of the receipt. Text recognition will automatically do the rest. Being a bit more technically specific, we're going to write a Firebase Cloud function that gets triggered when a new image gets uploaded to storage. We'll get the newly uploaded image and pass it to the Google Cloud Vision API which will return the text on the receipt. We then have to parse it, which we're going to bypass here because it's complicated to parse, and there are libraries out there to do this sort of thing. After we extract the information we need from the receipt, we'll add it to Firestore with a Boolean for whether it still needs user confirmation, and we'll show it in a particular section on the UI to let the user know that that receipt needs confirmation. Once a user confirms the receipt, we'll flip the Boolean in Firestore and then show the expense in the Confirmed Expenses section on the UI. As a side note, if you came from the first video of this series, aside from adding a Boolean for whether the receipt needs user confirmation, I have removed allowing users to update the image once it's added, because it doesn't really make any sense for users to upload an entirely new receipt when the information all needs to get extracted again. They might as well delete the old receipt and upload a new one. Without further ado, let's start building this feature. You can get the starter code by Git cloning the GitHub repo linked in the description. If you came straight from the first video, you'll probably still want to Git clone this repo because some of the component details changed to align with the addition of confirming receipts. And just as a reminder, while we are using React and Next to build this app, I'm going to focus on building the functionality with Firebase and Google Cloud and not the components themselves. So let's get into it. At a high level, when a user adds a receipt, we're going to want to automatically parse that data. You might be thinking to yourself, that sounds like backend, but I don't really want to make a backend system because then I'd have to manage servers and infrastructure. We probably don't want to do all of the processing on the client side either for a few reasons. First, once we write our top secret code to process the receipts, we don't want anyone to just be able to take it along with the data. Requests coming in from users' phones are considered an untrusted environment. Someone can modify the code just for that one page or device, so we need a trusted environment to help us process the receipts securely. Next, this might not be super relevant to us today, but imagine we also built an iOS and Android app for this expense tracker so a user on any device could use it. If that were the case and we put the processing code in the client, 
We'll have to duplicate the code to process the receipts three times, one for each platform. It'd be so much better if we could just write it once and have the code run in one place instead of writing it once for iOS and deploying to the App Store and writing it once for Android to deploy to the Play Store and writing it once for web to deploy to hosting. Also, if we deployed the app separately, iOS users may get this cool feature first, and Android or web users might get mad. And we definitely don't want that to happen. Lastly, we're looking to process our receipts. And to do so, we'll likely need to run text recognition on the receipts, which we can imagine might be CPU intensive. The last thing we want is to run highly intensive code on our users' devices, especially if it might drain a user's battery. So what should we do? Well, Firebase Cloud Functions enables you to run code in the cloud. It's in a secure environment, and you can write it once to be used for any platform. To run the code, you can trigger it based on platforming events or HTTP requests. And since it's running on the cloud off of the user's device, this won't be hard on their devices. Best of all, you can basically run backend code without managing any servers. In addition, Cloud Functions automatically scales up and down to meet user demand, which means that even if the app is an overnight success, Firebase can handle that. And you'll only pay for what you use, which means if you take your app down because of some bugs and there are no users, you won't have to pay for anything. If you do have users, then how much you pay depends on how many times these functions get triggered. You do have to be on a place pay-as-you-go plan, though, to use functions. How do we trigger these functions? Cloud Functions works with a variety of Firebase products, including Firestore, storage, and authentication. In our case, when an image gets added to storage, we're going to want to get that image and process it. And in general, for storage, you can trigger a function in response to uploading, updating, or deleting files and folders in storage. Before we can implement the code to do this, we're going to initialize Cloud Functions. You may have noticed that nowhere in the starter code is any mention or folder or file about Cloud Functions, but we're about to change that. There are a few steps we need to take to accomplish this. First, if you don't already have a Firebase project from the first video, feel free to follow the link in the description on how to do so. If you do already have a Firebase project, please go to Firebase Console, copy your project configuration by going to Project Settings, and paste that into the Firebase config variable in firebase.js. Next, copy the storage bucket URL and open storage.js to set the bucket underscore URL variable as what you just copied. This is going to make sure we upload images to the correct storage bucket for your project. We'll also have to do one more step in Firebase Console, which is to upgrade to the Blaze plan if you haven't already. Remember, we cannot use Cloud Functions otherwise. We can go to Usage and Billing, then Details and Settings, and click on Modify Plan. Select the Pay As You Go plan, and we can set a billing budget, which means you'll get an email notification whenever the bill goes over whatever amount you put in here. I'll put in a dollar since I don't really want to spend money on this right now, and then click Purchase. Next, we'll need to install the Firebase CLI by doing npm install dash g firebase dash tools in the command line. After that finishes, let's run Firebase login, which will have us log in via the browser. Choose the appropriate email address, the one with which you create your Firebase project, and allow Firebase CLI to access your Google account. Upon success, the UI will say so, and so will the command line. We'll then do Firebase init functions, which will take us through some project setups. We'll use an existing project, so scroll through to find the one you're looking for. After doing so, we can choose JavaScript for language, no to ESLint, and yes to installing dependencies. With that, our Firebase initialization is complete, and we see here that there is a functions folder and an index.js file now. That's where we're going to write all of our functions code. So let's go ahead and write some code. We'll create a new function called read receipt details, and we'll use functions.storage.object to listen for object changes on the default cloud storage bucket. We can use the onFinalizeEvent 
which is sent when a new object or a new generation of an existing object is successfully created in the bucket. This includes copying or rewriting an existing object, and a failed upload does not trigger this event, meaning if the receipt failed to upload or update storage, this event will not be triggered. Once it is triggered, we get back a cloud storage object, which contains a variety of attributes, including the storage bucket that contains the file, the file path in the bucket, content type, and file size. We'll need the bucket and name for OCR and checking Firestore. So now we're ready to do some image processing on our receipt. Before we do so, we're going to enable the Google Cloud Vision API. We'll go to Google Cloud's console, which is console.cloud.google.com, and let's make sure we pick the correct project. Once we do, we can go to the search bar and type in Vision, and we see this Cloud Vision API under the Marketplace section. After clicking on that, we can enable the API. All right, so now we can go back to our code and use this API. We'll need to npm install at google-cloud slash vision first in the functions folder. After that's done, we can open index.js and write some code. We'll first get from the vision library an image annotator client, which is a service that performs Google Cloud Vision API detection tasks over client images. With the service, we'll use the text detection function from the client and pass in the image bucket. And then we'll get the text annotations from that and the description from the annotation. We can log this in Cloud Functions using logger.log of the text to see that we did parse this information properly. Let's then deploy the function so we can see what happens when we add an image to storage. On the command line, we can do Firebase deploy dash dash only functions, and this takes a bit of time to upload. Whoops, we see this error that tells us we can't use import outside of a module. We'll open package.json inside of our functions folder, and at the very bottom, we're going to add type module. All right, let's try again to deploy functions, and hopefully it'll be successful this time. Well, this is taking a while, isn't it? Let's fast forward time a bit to when it's done. All right, we can see functions successfully deployed, which means it's now running on the cloud, and we'll be able to execute the function. We'll also be able to see this function here in Firebase console. We can run our web app using npm run dev. And when we open our app, we got this error about needing to create an index for our Firestore query. You might be thinking, hey, wait, we didn't really do anything related to Firestore yet. So why do we need to create an index? Well, I not so secretly already wrote the needed Firestore code. And it's basically the same as the first video's Firestore code except we added an isConfirmed field, so we need to create a new index to include that. All right, I hoped by the time I finished saying all of that, the index would be done creating, but evidently not. Seems like we're doing a lot of waiting in this video, aren't we? First, waiting for functions to upload, and now we're waiting for this index to build. OK, still not done. Let's fast forward time a bit again. Okie dokes, now on the console, we see that our index is finally enabled. Let's go back to our web app, and we can check the page now. Let's log in, then add an expense to check whether our Cloud function gets triggered and that the uploader receipt gets processed. First, let's check storage in Firebase console to see that a new image has been added. We'll go to this folder, and we see the image is there. Great. Next, let's go back to Cloud console to see whether the information got parsed correctly. If we go back to the console homepage and again make sure that the project is the right one, we can type in logs into the search bar. On the top right here, the Jump to Now button has been useful because sometimes the timeline is a bit off. Here, we can see everything that got logged, and it contains information from our image. Seems like it's working. Next, we'll want to parse this, but since parsing isn't trivial and covering the code to parse a receipt will likely take up more time than talking about implementing OCR with Firebase and Google Cloud, we don't have time today to properly parse the text. So for now, we'll just hard code the results. With that, our function is almost done, 
and we just need to add the new receipt information into Firestore. Before we can do so, we'll have to initialize Firebase Admin, which is a set of server libraries that lets us interact with Firebase from privileged environments to perform actions, including accessing cloud storage buckets and cloud Firestore databases. As a side note, only use the Firebase Admin SDK from a trusted environment, like your own servers or Firebase functions, because it bypasses security rules. From part one of the series, we stored the address, amount, date, image bucket, items, location name, and user ID of the receipt into Firestore. We'll still have these, but we'll need to add one field for this video with OCR. Since now we want users to confirm the receipt, we'll have a new field called is confirmed so that we can show unconfirmed receipts in one section on the dashboard and confirmed receipts in another. This way, we can ask our users to confirm their receipts on the UI for any fields that were processed using the Google Cloud Vision API, and we can allow them to adjust any information that was incorrect. We'll need to get the user ID to put into Firestore for our new receipt. Since the name of the image will be the user ID slash the timestamp of when the user uploaded the image, we'll just use some regular expressions to extract that user ID. We'll then create our receipt object with all the contents of the receipt, hard-coded here because we didn't write parser code for the text that came back from the Google Cloud Vision API. We'll set is confirmed to false since we want the user to confirm the contents. With that, we'll add the receipt to Firestore. Let's deploy this function again. And just like last time, it'll take a few moments. Once it's done, we'll go back to our app and add a new receipt. We'll add a new receipt, and it'll take some time to process. Once it's done, we can refresh the page, and we'll see the uploader receipt in our Need Confirmation section. We can click on the check mark here, which will open this pop-up just in case any information needs to be adjusted. And we can confirm once everything looks good. Afterward, it'll be moved to the Expenses section, and we can still edit and delete the receipt as needed. So there we have it. Thanks for joining me in building out OCR, where the receipt images get automatically read by the Google Cloud Vision API, and we used Firebase Cloud Functions to trigger all of this. I hope this was helpful, and see you next time, where we'll see how to roll out new features safely and confidently using Firebase Remote Config and Google Analytics. In the meantime, happy Firebasing. Thank you.